Absolutely glory. Are you ready to take us in? See, I believe the key is Phoenix. Amen. Believe, believe it. Hey! I know this guy by the name of Neil Frisbee. I never met him, but I met his son who went to Africa with his son to Nigeria. But Neil, they, before he moved to heaven, he went out to eat with a number of people. And Curtis, his son, said, My dad hadn't been to a restaurant in 30 years. Because he's hidden away with the Lord. Mm. And he would come out of his hiding place and go do miracles. Mm. In a place called Capstone Ministries. Mm. That the Lord had given the name Capstone, which is the crowning of the mm. Tatum and O'Neill. The building is built like a pyramid. The, Curtis told me that he took and set it according to the stars. The building. Mm. Figure that out. Look up neilfrisbee.com. Google. There's a bunch of good teachings on his website. But he, he took and sowed his life into writings. And they're available today. But I believe that one there spent 30 years of intercession for Phoenix. That's what I believe. And then moved to heaven. You see, his son, Curtis, this lady wanted to give him a hundred thousand to a hundred twenty thousand dollar house. He said, "I couldn't take it because uh, her kids were in agreement, and I didn't want to offend it, be an offense for the gospel." Oh wow! That was the integrity that he walked in. Because wow. he didn't want to, he wanted to make sure that those kids didn't get offended by him receiving a house. So that tells me a lot about his dad. You have a kid like that, he's got some integrity. It's like, oh my gosh. Think about it. That's a pretty good temptation. Yes. $100,000 house. You get contacted. Here, I want to give you this. Is your family in agreement with your kids? Sorry, I can't take it. She's still got reward in heaven for one kid. Yeah. It's pretty wild. And there's a lot of people that have prayed in Phoenix, so don't get me wrong, but there's that place in travail that Father wants to bring us all into that we take and catch traction. You know, I'd pray for an hour in the Spirit, and then He'd show me how to pray with my understanding. And I might pray for five minutes. Just saying whatever he wants me to say. There's other times when I was more fasted up. Like coming out of 13 days of water. And then the power of God comes. And it's like you're sitting in the chair and all of a sudden it sets you up straight. Actually tilt me a little bit. And take me like yeah, you know, just start praying and kind of in this travail would hit. It'd get it take me like six, seven minutes, and the authority would just come, and it would only take me just a short few moments of time to get into that whatsoever you say of the Lord. The second time he brought me into that place, out of my heart comes no. And it shocked me, and I'm like, where did that come from? See, my flesh did not, your flesh does not want to submit to the will of God. And so unless you grab it by the back of the neck, get your husband or your wife or somebody to hold your head. If you're not hungry for the word, get someone to hold your head over your Bible. And you don't let your eyes depart until they don't want to depart. Or you ain't getting out of there. And then she start praying and fasting and breaking that stuff off of you. Because when your heart's full of the word, You'll have a hunger for the word. You would want to just be reading your word all the time. That's right. You can be so strong in your spirit, so that you won't want your eyes to depart from it. Right. I used to walk across the compound wherever I go. I had that little New Testament. <laughs> it's 
of life to those that find it. <coughs> Health and healing. <coughs> so what did what did they write? The book of Acts, Acts 20, 32. I commend you unto God the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give unto you the inheritance that's set aside for those that are sanctified. Oh, there's an inheritance for the saints that set apart ones. Oh, come out from among them, be ye suffering, I receive it, be a father unto you. Oh, oh then, I, then, then I, so if I come out from among walking after the, the natural, start walking after the spirit, I get my inheritance. What is it? The abilities of heaven, all the angels of God backing me. Did you know that he's raising up an army right now? Yes. I don't know. I don't know if you know it or not. But this army is going to be what? How is Jesus sitting right now? He's the firstborn from among the dead. He sat down on the right hand of the Father, waiting till what? His enemies be made his footstool. Now, you are his body. Amen? Did you know that you're seated in heavenly places also? Mm -hmm. In fact, you've been raised in his likeness. Mm -hmm. So, how Father raised Jesus, what did he do? We're back to that point then. Jesus, the bowels of the earth, paid the price for our sins, Psalms 22. He's on the cross. It says, the bulls of Ashton gaped about me. He's like, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? First time where he was separated from God. The bulls of my shadow took him to the bowels of the earth. Thinking they crucified the Lord of glory, they finally got him. Abandoned and tormented him for how long? <clears throat> for three and a half years. All of a sudden, there's a man they can't touch. The devils, the demons, couldn't touch Jesus. They would taunt him. They would, they would come at him. They would come at him through his followers. He goes to raise Lazarus from the dead. Was he not, you know, you know, if you'd been here, my brother not die. Right. Roll away the stone. But Lord, by this time he's thinking. You know, the enemy kept trying to get him offended. I don't believe he wept because, because of compassion for the people. I just don't believe it. I wept because, I believe he wept because the power of God hit him so strong when the Lord had come to raise Lazarus from the dead. He walked in that level of power on a regular basis, I believe. But when he went to raise him from the dead, the Lord had hit Lazarus come forward. See, he groaned with himself. I believe he spoke in tongues. And then what did he do? Lazarus. Yeah. And so here's a typology of the body coming forth. And God the Father speaking. And the body, and I believe that Lazarus was taken and stood before Jesus. And Jesus said, loose him and let him go. Get those grave clothes out. See, you know, you and I, we need to get our grave clothes off. Oh, what are they? Oh, two trees in the garden? <laughs> tree of knowledge of good and evil? Tree of life? Oh, two trees in Philippians chapter 2. Chapter 3. I had to count everything from, from my natural abilities, but no. <coughs> then I may know him in the fellowship of, being, of his sufferings, in the power of his resurrection. The tree of life, Jesus, in you. So am I going to walk after this tree of life that's in me and become God inside minded, tree of life inside minded? Or am I going to walk after the natural, the tree of good knowledge of good and evil? Which is really for a son of God made the image of God with the abilities of heaven, all the sin and fallen short of the glory. The glory is the delegated authority of, of who God has made you to be. And so if I keep turning my back 
and the glory and the anointing of who he's made me to be spiritually and walk after the flesh and become dependent on the flesh rather than dependent on who he made me to be is really falling short of the glory. And so he's asking us today, will you walk in that level of glory? Will you walk where I can flood you with my abilities? Will you live in that place of the goodness of God that I can take care of you and spoil you and teach you to ride on the high places of the earth? Isaiah 58. You should be well like a well-watered garden. When? When you break every enslaving yoke to the realm of the natural and walk after the spirit. Because Philippians chapter 3, it says, then you should become as living amongst the dead will in the body. In Isaiah 58, you should be like a well of the wind, well watered, water God, whose anointing fails not, whose power doesn't fail. Yes. And you shall be called to repair the breach, restore the streets to dwell in. How about it, Phoenix? We ready to see some streets restored? Yes. Woo. And I will cause you to ride on the high places of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob from the mouth of the Lord is spoken. I left out a whole bunch of good stuff in that chapter, but that's the gist of it. So there's a battle in every one. Walk after the flesh, walk after the spirit. I don't know if I can really trust the spirit, so I better deal with this stuff. <laughs> and we all grow through it. There's no temptation but that which is common to man. But are we going in circles in the wilderness? And am I doing the same old things but not figuring out the plan to kill and kill and take out the unbelief in my life? He's looking for full blown believers to lead the army of God in the battle. Yeah. As in the military, a point person that fears no evil. If stuff isn't happening around you, then what you know when you start pressing in. And it is like hell breaks loose. Yeah. You know what that means? Your current status is already fortified by the enemy. What? Serious. You start pressing in, you start fasting, spend time in the Word, you'll find all these distractions trying to pull you other ways. Yeah. And if you're just living life and there's no nothing. If you don't have any stuff coming against you, you're in place of satisfaction. The devil, you're no threat to the devil. But when you start hitting the mark of the high calling, stuff should hit the fan. Yeah. <laughs> but that just shows that he already thinks he's got you. And you're coming out of his grips. <laughs> What's your vision? What are you looking at? How to finish over your faith or am I looking at the world system? Am I looking for help from the world system or am I looking? So we got to come to the place where we're not respecting our persons. Yes. Begin to see things through the love of God. Yes. See yes. Father's love for everyone looking and looking and, and seeing a potential. When you have a crush on somebody, you don't see the idiosyncrasies. You're blinded. Amen? Yeah, but you, don't, you don't see the problems they already got. You're, you're just spent with this gooey love stuff and you just look past all the junk. Yeah, it's the and you know, if they do something bad, you ignore it because you're in love. Yeah. You refuse to believe that was them. Because <laughs> <laughs> love covers them all the day of the sin. Yeah. And he wants us to live in that space place of oneness with him. Amen? Mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus. Are you guys ready to escape the, the wilderness and crawl into the and, and yes. run into the promised land? Yes. Think about it. He says, I'm await you. <laughs> See, he's waiting. There's a sweet spot he has for you. Oh my gosh. 
All right, so don't see yourself through your eyes. Begin to see yourself through his eyes, through his word. I mean, I'm up in the jail with that. I feel sorry for the rest of them. Like, I'm sure none of you guys have ever done that. I know you don't like moping in prayer. <laughs> he already knows my condition. I don't have to tell him. <laughs> if I'm feeling that way. He sees that demonic influence. He says, bust that out, you. <laughs> Stand up and do what I made you to be. But so I'm sitting both and feeling sorry for myself one day. And he says, Jim, stop seeing yourself through your own eyes. Begin to see yourself through my eyes, through my word, for that is how you really are. Did you hear that? Yeah. Begin to confess what he says about you. Speak the word only. And my servant will be healed. The centurion said. Go thy way, your faith has made you whole. Oh, your faith has made you. Oh, your faith has made you. Oh, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Oh, that's what John said. That's what Jesus. Oh, your faith has made you whole. Come on. Oh, my gosh. I don't know if I want to read. I don't got time to read my Bible. I am working by the sweat of my brow. Oh, my gosh. We're all there. Been there. But there's a remnant coming out. Yeah. Being led of the Holy Ghost. Into the promises of God. Yes. Oh. You mean to tell me 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4 starts. Oh no, we're going to start with 2. Grace and peace be multiplied. Oh, grace and peace can be multiplied? <laughs> unto you? Unto me? Serious? <laughs> Multiplication of grace? I'm only, you know, it's like, most people only know grace is for forgiveness. Grace is the ability of God deposited and working in you. Yes, Standing you up. Yes. And boldness and power. Yes. Teaching you what have everything you say. Yeah. Even the building might shake. Like Acts chapter 4. Do you really believe that happened in the world? I did. Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. That we get to be, become partakers of his what? Divine nature? You mean that stuff he created the heavens and the earth with? And he wants you to partake in him. Go create with him? Yes. Amen. That's good. Yes. Stretch forth thine arm. Be thy heel. Rise up and walk. The authority of the believer. Yes. Normal anointing. Full blown, looking like Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. <clears throat> Same when the inside buries the outside. That's what Jesus is on the Mount of Transfiguration. That's what you're going to be looking like. Hallelujah. Come on. Yeah. Oh, you mean to tell me he makes this? <laughs> are you really? Are you ready to be made a pillar in his temple? I love that in Isaiah. I will fasten him as a nail or a peg in a secure place and to bring honor to Father's house as a glorious throne. Yes. See, that's Jesus in the Mount of Transfiguration. And my vision right now is Father's preparing the hearts of believers to fully yield yes. and fully put on Christ by putting off the old man, finding out that, they, that Christ actually put them on, and they learn to fully yield. And they stand in, in, in positions in different regions of the land, all over the world, all over America, all over the planet, and will be looking like Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. See, I don't know about you, but I believe that Jesus, one of the Mount of Transfiguration, hanging out with Elijah and Moses. <coughs> Father opened the, the eyes of Peter, James, and John to see what and John to see what Jesus looked like all the time. And he was looking like his daddy when he shows up to Moses. And when Jesus shows up to the Apostle Paul, brighter than noonday sun, he was looking like God introducing himself to Moses. Think about it. Oh, you mean you're born of that class of spiritual beings? You, you mean God the Father who sat on a, a voice of the dead bird? 
and then introduces himself to Moses later and shows him his glory. And then you come out of the loins of the one that was introducing himself to Moses, God the Father, and you got born of his seed. How did you get that deal? It's like, what? Is that too good to be true? It's like, what? Are you kidding? You got that deal with God. Yes. You got born of God? You can actually come out of his loins? You come out of the seed? Because he impregnated you with his word, as you can see. And a new creation in Christ Jesus was born. In the same level that Jesus was raised from the dead. Jesus being the firstborn, now you another born. Because he's the firstborn among many brethren. It's like, what? Oh my gosh. And then he got baptized with the same baptism Jesus got. Yes. Huh? What do you want to do with that? <laughs> Maybe we just said that's what I'm asking you. <laughs> Amen? Amen. For such a time as this, you have been born of God. Yeah. For such a time as this, yeah. you have been born of God. For such a time as this, handpicked Ephesians chapter 1. From the foundations of the world, predestined to be conformed to his image. Handpicked from the foundation of the world to live during the climax of the ages, the maturity of the times. First time I preached that, one of the prophetic girls in the room saw a cloud of witnesses in the spin balcony peering into the room, all cheering. <laughs> Think about it. What? The cloud of witnesses? You know how many people in heaven are praying for you? Yeah. Oh my gosh. For all of us? Do you know that you can see what's going on? Hey. The veil between heaven and here is really. Do you know how many angels have been set up to take care of us? Amen? And, and are waiting for assignments? Yes. Did you know that heaven is voice activated? Yes. If you can believe, you can speak. Paul said, I have believed, therefore I have spoken. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the get to's in God? If you're religious, it's a have to. If you're in love, it's like, I get to. Oh my God. I, what? I get to. I get to live in the glory. I get to tell this story. I get to prove it's not now like earth. I get to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, heal the sick, assemble the troops. What? <laughs> teach people who they are, teach them to stand up in the fullness of who God made them to be. Amen. If I take a parachute, you often know, in the India with nothing. Mm. But a Bible, can you make it? Yes. yes. <laughs> Think about it. You're being dropped off in the middle of nowhere with your Bible. Can you flourish? Can you prove the gospel? Yes. Can you prove the kingdom of God is at hand? Can you flourish in the desert? Abraham did it under the old covenant. He's like, you take the better than I'll take the lower because I know who's on my side. <laughs> oh my gosh, we went around and around in the night. <laughs> so what's the moral of the story? It's time for heaven on earth. When the heaven on earth church is about to be born. <coughs> and Jesus died and went from the cross. But he said, and send them the Holy Ghost. And you're going to receive power to do the things that I do. The greater things that you're going to do because I'm going to the Father. In other words, I'm getting a better resurrection. 
And in fact, that better resurrection I get is what you're going to get. What? Really? Hallelujah. So what does he do? He goes, moves to heaven, appears to few. People get filled with the Holy Ghost. He made sure it happened. Very important. So really what he's saying is, you know what, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, now tag your head and I'll get going. Holy! It's time. It's time. Take the nation. A lot of fire that won't go out. Do something that won't be quenched. Do something that can't be stopped. Let, 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 let the glory flow like a river and change and rearrange nations. Bring everybody out of the unbelief. Cause them to believe by what they see. Because unless they see it, sometimes they won't believe it. And in fact, unless you see it, sometimes you won't believe it. Right. So you got to let it assassinate that doubt and unbelief. you got to kick it out of your life. you got to eat the word until it's all gone. Come to the place where your prayer life gets traction and then you come into that place of travail where you, your heart breaks for those things and the compassion comes up and then you speak life to it and those words come out and you, you know what me speaking better is my spirit and I'm God in it, fully leading and guiding it. And now I'm going to call the things that are not. And the words coming out of my, my mouth is fireballs just like what come out of the heart of the Father when he spoke to the Apostle Paul. That word comes up and the angel will be given charge to make sure it comes to pass. And you begin to call things that are not as though they are. And you begin to reclothe everything that's dead. And bring it back to life. Amen. And by faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. And Adam and Eve took it out. And brought it under the curse. Now everything that's under the curse has is, is been, is been yearning to come out. And all the people are travailing. And they're, they're, they're waiting for us to stand up and do what we're called to do and bring and reclothe the whole planet with the glory of God. And that'll be the witness that Jesus was raised from the dead because all the glory is going to cover the whole planet. And everybody's going to be able to be a recipient of the anointing, a recipient of the glory. The knowledge of the glory is going to cover the earth so that everybody on earth can live by the abilities of the anointing. Can you get a picture of this? Can you get a picture of everybody being able to speak life one to another? There's a scripture that says, without each part adapting power to your brother's need, Ephesians chapter 4. See, we all come into the unity of the faith and the full measure of the stature of nothing less than the complete personality of Christ Jesus. The unity of the faith is every one of us beginning to operate in his level of faith. And I'm not talking about two people, the gods that come down in the likeness of it, but, but thousands of sons and daughters walking and living in full spiritual stature with the abilities of heaven permanently and proficient in raising the dead, casting the devil's healers, and there won't be one feeble one amongst us. If it was in the Old Testament, when they come out of Egypt, and when it, it, it into the Promised Land, how much more than the New Covenant after the blood of Jesus was shed. And now everybody can operate in the abilities of the anointing because of the purging of the conscience so your mind can hook back into your spirit. For to be spiritually minded is life and peace, but to be carnally minded is death. Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. But you don't understand that as my father's died. I wouldn't go to the funeral. No, let the dead bury the dead. Come follow me. Come out from among them, be ye separate. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, as you look into him, you'll get your faith finished. You come into the unity of his faith fully working in you because God has dealt to each man his measure or the measure of faith. Amen. And what faith did you get? The same one Jesus got when he sat down at the right hand of the Father. The full spiritual stature being the firstborn from the book of death. But the difference between him and us, we're his body, and he's got your you're his body now. With his abilities of who he is in heaven, manifesting in you, and your body gives you legal right to operate. 
and his abilities on earth as he is in heaven. Apostle John's testimony, if you read the book of John, as he is in heaven, so are we on earth. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. Like, oh. What are you doing with that? <laughs> stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. Jesus. Oh my gosh. Anybody need something healed in here? Everybody healthy? Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you're watching by internet, if you don't ask Jesus Christ into your heart, why don't you say this with me? My Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believe in the direction, with confession the mouth is made into salvation. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What the church really hasn't been teaching is that the word saved is the Greek word sozo or soteria, which means to be made whole. And everybody compares and looks at the wholeness under the level of a man. But really the author of the, in, of the book said that it is really is that wholeness is on God's level. And since you're God's son, all of his abilities are available for you. So whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be a new creation in Christ Jesus, shall be transfigured out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. He will teach you how to walk and talk and walk in his power and walk like Jesus walked is really the reality of it all. If you simply believe. So say this if you like. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Make yourself real to me. I receive you as my Lord and, your, and Lord and my Savior. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill, forgive me of my sins. Teach me to know your word and live in your word. And let your word live in me. Because your word releases the promises of God into my life. And when it becomes revelation in my heart, it blows up and it establishes me in your kingdom and your abilities. So teach me how to apply your word, Father, to me. And I thank you that Jesus died for me. And that God, you raised Jesus from the dead. I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. Teach me to walk in your power. In Jesus' name, I give you my life. Hallelujah. If you pray that prayer, uh, message us. And know that Jesus has a crush in you. He's crazy about you. And uh, he wants to teach you how to walk and talk. And to release his power and take patience. Amen? Amen. Glory! Jim, the girl that we prayed for earlier today, this morning, uh -huh. she's texted and said um, she's recovered. Hallelujah. She's uh, she's watching. So she... Glory to God. Father, I just thank you that you healed her this morning when we prayed. In the name of Jesus, I give you praise. Bella. Uh, huh? Bella. Bella? So, Father, I just thank you for Bella, but I thank you, Father, for your anointing falling on her, quickening her by the inner man teaching her to walk in your power. I bless her. I thank you for the increase in your government upon her shoulders. Yes. Uh, thank you, Father, that she no longer gets sick anymore. Yes. But she, she set a standard now that by his stripes, by your stripes, Jesus, she was healed and that she is whole. And so we just bless her. We thank you for your love and your grace for her and that God healed this morning when we pray. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, that's the girl. Where is she at? In the Philippines. She's in the Philippines. We prayed the bus this morning. The Father's word went, whew. See, the Spirit, there's no time or distance. And so this girl in the Philippines get healed this morning with Ray. Hallelujah. Now, Rose, she has a big world that's going on her arm, and so she needs prayer for it. Okay. Yeah, so Is she in the same place? Yes. That's the mother. <coughs> okay. The mother has got Hallelujah. Father, I thank you by faith. I just laid my hand on Rose. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ, and I, and I command that that growth to disappear right now. Yes. I command it to shrink and be gone, totally without a trace. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, that the skin grows perfectly back, and you yes. can't tell that there's ever a problem. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, to give you praise in Jesus' name. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just command that growth gone and her yes. totally healed in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, as a testimony Amen. to everybody around here. Anybody else with somebody call up the sick? Can we pray for him? Uh, Pastor John is actually uh, in the hospital right now. I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but uh, it, it let us know that it's uh, an emergency. Since Pastor John 
Can you get him out of the boat? Father, I just thank you for John. Father, by faith, I'll lay hands on him and I'll loose your healing, create the power to flow into his body. Whatever this is coming against him, I break it, I bind it, I command it loose from him. And I command John totally healed right now. In Jesus' name, Father, thank you for our Father. I command every symptom to disappear off of his body right now. In Jesus' name, Father, thank you for our Lord. There it is. Father, thank you, Lord. Have to start moving. See if there's something different. Hallelujah. Father, and I just thank you for that apostolic anointing on his life. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for it, Lord. Hello, anybody else? So, Ruth, yeah. Father, I just thank you for all the Ruths that I know. Father, by faith, I lay hands on them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I curse all cancer. Yes. In the name of Jesus, I command every cancer cell to come back into alignment. Every cancer cell to die. In the name of Jesus, I thank you if I command alignment. In the name of Jesus, I command every cell to come into alignment. In the name of Jesus, I thank you if I command those. And then every cell to come into alignment of perfect healing right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you cancel. The, 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 the assignments of death against these people. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, God, that I lose healing. And I command every symptom and every cell to be totally healed and perfected in Jesus' name. I thank you for it, Lord. A suit for a cancer. Sue. Sue? Well, I thank you for the same thing for Sue. I command Sue totally healed right now. In Jesus' name. I thank you for it, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody else know somebody that's sick? Glory. You know, I was going to bring my other phone. I'm going to start getting my phone. I have an extra phone. I'm going to get that phone number for it online. And if someone's sick watching, they can call in. Hallelujah. I'm just going to build this thing. It don't matter what it looks like. That's what Gabriel told me. <laughs> Whoops, <coughs> that's a one line. Um, they can, that's what 365 does, is they, they text one line. Or they, they, oh, yeah? Yeah. They connect to the line so you can sit there and read their Gotcha. Request. Gotcha. So I'm, I need another phone besides this one, which I have. But then, yeah, they'd be able to just text a line and you read that on the phone. Yeah, that's fine. And gotcha. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you. I pull out every word prayed or spoken. Over every, every person at the sound of my voice, I break every word that's not of God. Yes. And I break it off of each person in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I thank you. I pull down those words. I break them off. I break off all false doctrines. And deception off people in here. Yes. And in, in, in the sound of my voice, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Bowser, I thank you for it, Father. Yes. 
<coughs> Hallelujah. Do you, you, you know what you know what false doctrine does? See what happens is people don't really know how to submit, but non people don't want to submit, so then they go find a church that's not submitted. Because then they're not responsible to submit. You got it. Because they don't trust them. Tickle ears. Huh? Tickle ears. Tickle ears? Just tell me I'm okay in my current condition. <laughs> but see, when you look at it, of all sin and falling short of the glory, all of sin and falling short of the abilities I delegated to you. That's different than just sin. That makes us a little more responsible, which we are. Okay. I'll leave. Let's get on the phone and invite some more people. And uh, glory to God. I have a blast up here. I hope you do, too. <laughs> but it's not about me. It's about you. To get his word out. Because he's resurrecting an army. And he's putting one together. Amen. And I do believe we're going to have a church called Heaven on Earth Church. Amen. Heaven we're on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. I mean, we got millions of people praying for us. That kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Come on. All right. Now, Father, I just... Father, we just thank you for stirring up the gift of faith and all those beliefs of people that pray the Lord's Prayer. And that the kingdom of God will begin to come on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. Amen? And then they did all the daily bread with the word. And loose not believe. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we keep forgetting, but we should take an offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> If you're, uh, you can give on PayPal, Glory Time, G L O R Y T I M E at MSN.com. And if you want to sow seed tonight, uh, you can. And if you want to make out a check, you can make it out to Throne Room Ministries. Not, not just Throne Room Ministries. Hallelujah. I mean, it's got to come from the throne. Amen.
to hear you. We've got a mind to know you. Got a mind to know you. We've got a mouth. We've got a mouth to taste you. To taste you. We've got the power. We've got the power. We've got the power. We've got the power. We've got, the power. We've got Jesus. We've got Jesus. We've got a nose. We've got a nose. We've got the we, body, we've got the body to feel the We are a new creation. We are a new creation. We are refined. We are refined. We are glorified. We are glorified. We got Jesus. We got Jesus. Seek the glory, seek the glory, seek for honor, seek for honor, seek for immortality, seek for attitude, oh, seek eternal life, seek eternal life, discern his body, discern his body, seek perfection, seek perfection, we've got the power, we got the power, we got the power, we got the power, we got Jesus, we got Jesus.